Point Motors. What are they all about? Let's find out. Roll the credits. It is important to choose the correct point motor that meets your needs and operates within your budget. There are a number of options available whether you want the motors to be mounted under the baseboard where they're out of sight or surface mounted. As this can be quite a large subject I am going to split this up into various sections and make it into two videos. The first video will deal with the motors and the second video will deal with how to control them. To help you find the information you are looking for, I have broken the film up into chapters which are listed in the description below. Just click on that and it will take you directly to that chapter. Point motors can be broken down into three types. Servo, solenoid, slow action, stall motors. Each has their advantages and disadvantages. I will cover each in turn. Servo motors are extremely useful for anybody doing model railways. They can be used for point operation as well as signals and any other form of animation at very low cost. They are available in two types. The S version is made of plastic gears and the M version have metal stroke brass gears. I would always use the M series with the metal gears as they are harder wearing. I buy mine from AliExpress in batches of 10 and they usually cost about £1.60 each, including delivery. I have included an affiliate link in the description below. For switching the frog, we have to either use a micro switch included in the mount holding the motor or a relay. It is possible to set these up and use commercially available products. You could only find two commercially available solutions. The first being from ESU, the Switch Pilot 3, costing £51. This will control eight servos but does not operate the frog. If frog switching is required, then two additional servo assistance will be required at £31 each. This makes a total of £14.20 per servo, plus the cost of the motor and mount. The second commercial option is from Megapoints controllers. This comes in different modules depending on your needs. The main module for controlling eight servos comes in at £53. Should you wish to add relays to do the frog switching that will add an additional £78 per eight. If you wish to then control this via DCC that will add an additional £53. Please note that only one DCC controller is required to control the entire Megapoint system. As this integrates with the entire Megapoint system, should you wish to use a control panel, it offers complete flexibility of how you control your turnouts or signals, but it comes at a cost. Every module comes with comprehensive documentation and a video showing how to set it up and use. This is extremely comprehensive and other manufacturers could take an example of how it should be done. Servos are extremely popular with the people who have got the capability to build their own controllers with an Arduino. It does require some coding, but in the future I will be showing a full video including the coding to be able to do this. It is extremely useful because it not only allows you to control points, servos also allow you to control semaphore signals, and obviously add other animations to your layout. The servos can be controlled from either a push button, DCC or logo net and is an extremely cost effective solution. Solenoid point motors have been around for a very long time. They are simple and cost effective. They can be operated via push button, switch, lever, DCC or a control panel. 
They are extremely versatile and here in the UK they are available from a number of manufacturers including Hornby, Pico, Gage Master, Seep and for those wishing to operate via DCC you can now get point motors with built-in controllers and capacitor discharge units available from rails of Sheffield for both surface and underboard mountings and from the model center and gauge master for underboard mounts. All of those I believe are manufactured by DCC Concepts. I have personally used the rails of Sheffield surface mount versions and been extremely pleased with them. I will in the future be producing a separate video covering the entire range of solenoid motors and how they are controlled as this is quite a large topic and would make this video far too long. Although the installation is made significantly simpler via the solenoid motors with the associated independent controller there is one major caveat that needs to be explained. They are not in any way suitable if you have or wish to use Railcom. Railcom will send the control boards into orbit and make the railway unusable. I know, I had it happen. Slow action point motors are also one of the most popular ways of controlling points or turnout. They are easy to install. Circuitrons, Tortoise and Smale point motors have been around for a very long time. The Smale being a latest innovation as that has DCC decoder built in. For all intents and purposes they appear to be the same but they are quite large and quite expensive. When I was choosing the point motors to use for my layout I rejected these for a number of reasons. The first being the fact that they were quite bulky. The second being that they required soldering the connections rather than screw terminals or you could buy uh, adapters to make them available for screw terminals at extra cost. It also turns out they are not quite so reliable as people might think. I have included a link to the McKinley Railway who have hundreds of these installed on their layout but they have found that the contacts providing the switching for the frogs seem to be poorly designed on the contacts and have a high failure rate because of that. Charlie Bishop at Chadwick Model Railway who does their video has also got these point motors installed on his model railway and he has experienced exactly the same problem. DCC Concepts make four types of slow action motors. The first being the Cobalt IP Analog. The second being the, D the IP Digital. The third being the Cobalt SS. And the fourth being the recently introduced Ultra. Nearly half of the point motors installed on this layout are the digital IP motors. These are exceptionally easy to install and program. I will be producing a video showing how to do this in the future. I am extremely pleased with them and found them completely reliable. The other thing I like about the IP digitals are that they come with a lifetime warranty. The IP analog and digital are basically the same. The analog being purely operated via external devices such as control panel or switches. The digital being having a DCC decoder built in. The one major caveat you have to take into consideration though is that they are not repeat not in any way compatible with Railcom. The Ultra is the latest version to be introduced and is basically the analog version of the point motor with an additional printed circuit board that provides up to the use of three DCC addresses to operate that point. This provides limited 
functionality for providing route. Although I do think it is a little bit pricey for that limited improvement in functionality. The SS version is a compact motor that fits on the surface with an underboard control board. They are extremely difficult to install and in the end we could not get them to work reliably and have subsequently removed them. Steve of Steve TT120 who has literally helped me build this layout tried them on his TT layout and could not even get them to function with TT points and he has removed them from his layout as well. The MTB motors are available in a variety of sizes and formats both analog and digital and seem to be competitively priced i have not personally tried these they appear to be of a compact size and if you are interested in these i would suggest talking to james at dcc automation in conclusion there is no simply this is the best there are some which are very good. I personally like the point motors that have their built-in DCC controller. I find these much more convenient and quicker to install and set up and significantly reduce the required wiring. And in general, they are more cost-effective. Whether you use the solenoid or slow action motor versions is a personal choice both work very well in general i feel that the servo motors are probably more used by the more experienced modeler and who has got the ability to provide the appropriate control systems independently 